It's not specifically stated that Sheldon is autistic, but it's implied. The response to my first reaction video watching an episode of The Big Bang Theory was brilliant, so time for another. This is the robotic manipulation. Ready? Let's crack on. Entire dinner unpacked by robot. <laughs> and it only took 28 minutes. <laughs> Impressive, but we must be cautious. Why? Today, it's a Chinese food retrieval robot. Tomorrow, it travels back in time and tries to kill Sarah Connor. There's always this looming threat that AI is going to take over all parts of medicine. ChatGPT is going to be your AI therapist rather than a human. Maybe one day we'll have AI capable of consciousness and affective empathy. So resonating with the emotions of others rather than purely recognizing objective emotional states in others or more logical perspective taking. But a lot of emotions aren't logical. That's what makes them complicated. That's what makes them, frankly, pretty interesting. You realize, Penny, that the technology that went into this arm will one day make unskilled food servers such as yourself obsolete. <laughs> really? They're gonna make a robot that spits on your hamburger? <laughs> they could do that. Sheldon's so blunt, but you could also just say he's just brazenly honest. Information delivered, but without the social niceties that might soften up the tone to not hurt someone's feelings. Hey, Sheldon? Yes. <clears throat> Peace? No, not peace. Hang on. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state. At least we know robots are capable of doing <laughs> what all the gays do with that cliched peace sign in every photo. Amy's at the dry cleaners and she's made a very amusing pun. <clears throat> I don't care for perchloroethylene and I don't like glycol ether. I like it. It's like ether. It's like ether. Get it? You get it? She doesn't like glycol ether. <laughs> Sounds like either. See what they did there? <laughs> I preferred her joke about the thriller at the amygdala. I can understand that as a psychiatrist, whereas I was terrible at organic chemistry. That and embryology. If I've ever been teaching medical students, you just have to cross your fingers and hope that no one asks you any question related to those things. Who's Amy? His girlfriend. Sheldon has a girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. Well, how long has this been going on? Four months. She's not my girlfriend. Are you telling me for the past four months I have been asking you what's new and you never thought to go with Sheldon has a girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. <laughs> he doth protest too much. Where's that hidden nerve? A logical scientist like him dare not have an emotional connection with someone else. Sheldon's always kind of put himself above this very basic need for human intimacy rather than being completely self-reliant. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Elliot. I'm a doctor and psychiatrist in the UK. I make content about mental health, so if you like that sort of thing, do check out the other videos. Do consider subscribing. Wait, well, what do you communicate about? Well, my work in physics, her work in neurobiology, and most recently, the possibility of our having a child together. <laughs> I'm sure this comes from a purely logical conversation, but that also shows some of his difficulties in reading social cues and perspective taking. He had no concept of how that phrasing might be considered by other people, specifically by the neurotypicals in the room. Amy pointed out that between the two of us, our genetic material has the potential of producing the first in a line of intellectually superior benign overlords to guide humanity to a brighter tomorrow. It's <laughs> sounding a bit... you. Jenna I'm Keaton. guessing that future historians will condemn us for not taking this opportunity to kill Sheldon. <laughs> I think they might. Eugenics was unfortunately a big influence over psychiatry in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It promoted this idea that mental illness was purely hereditary. We know it's not. This led to forced sterilization programs in many countries. And in Nazi Germany, the eugenic policies escalated to euthanasia of the mentally ill under something called a T4 program. One of many incredibly dark, horrific chapters in medical history. I'm quite aware of the way humans usually reproduce, which is messy, unsanitary, <laughs> and based on living next to though. you for three years, involves loud and unnecessary appeals to a deity. <laughs> Yes, exactly. We also know that asexuality is overrepresented in autistic people compared to neurotypical people. We don't know why. 
We don't know if this is causative in any way or purely associative data. Some hypothesized reasons people have given include sensory sensitivities, differences in social processing, reduced interest in social norms around the relationship. We know that sex is quite a normalized act in romantic relationships. Some researchers have also postulated that something called alexithymia, so difficulty recognizing emotions, may also play a role. If Amy and I choose to bring new life into this world, it will be accomplished clinically with fertility experts in a lab with petri dishes. Which reminds me, you have broad hips and a certain corn-fed vigor. Is your womb available for rental? Is that a compliment? <laughs> As a lowly Brit who's never been to Nebraska and frankly knows nothing about it or farming, I'm presuming it is a read based on the laughter track, but maybe wasn't intended as that? Clue me in, folks. Clue me in. Oh, God, that feels so good. <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, that's <laughs> kidding me. Ball, baby. <laughs> that's going to be so much worse. But we're actually only a few minutes into this video. There's plenty of time left, so <laughs> I don't think it takes a master's or PhD to see where Howard's base urges may take him, which will be a sharp contrast to Sheldon's petri dish ambitions or where howard's literal manipulation of a robot parallels the way that the gang thinks sheldon's thinking is very robotic i'll eat later i'm busy <laughs> oh yeah just like a real hand very important research <laughs> there it is Hmm. Is he going to have slipped and fallen onto a robotic hand? I've worked in the emergency department as a junior doctor. I think most doctors and nurses that have worked there have encountered patients that have slipped and fallen onto something creative. What I hate though is then when you see healthcare professionals telling these stories all over social media for likes and clicks. And they do it because medicine is still really prudish about sex. Really quite judgmental. Sex is a normal part of life between consenting adults. It's normal to do, but also it's normal not to do. Can I ask you a question? Given your community college education, I encourage you to ask me as many as possible. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, my question is, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer, is this your first date? He's such an intellectual snob, but he's actually funnier than I remember him being. Well, that depends. Does square dancing with my sister at a Teens for Jesus 4th of July hoedown count as a date? I'm going to say no. <laughs> Sheldon's religious upbringing is really interesting. Being neurodivergent, growing up in a culture surrounded by people asking you to believe these really quite fantastical things based on faith, not logic, and then being made to feel even more othered by having a different point of view. And then when you have difficulties understanding social cues and social interactions and forming friendships and healthy relationships, because that's what many autistic people struggle to do. That's how often people get the diagnosis. We start to see why Sheldon has moved towards this world of logic, science, but particularly a part of science when he's just dependent on him. Okay, well then there's a couple of things you should probably know. I have a master's degree and two doctorates. The things I should know, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But two doctorates. Emotions aren't logical, though. And in leadership, in relationships, developing some degree of emotional intelligence is actually really important. You need to be self-aware of your own emotions. You can pretend emotions aren't there, but that doesn't mean that they're not. You need to be able to regulate those emotions, including those impulses, Howard. You need social awareness and cognitive and affective empathy. Cognitive empathy is understanding the emotions of others. Affective empathy is resonating with the emotional states of others. And when you have that understanding of emotions, you can use that to try and navigate this messy world of relationships, whether romantic relationships, professional ones, friendships. However, that also relies on neurotypicals to be just as aware of neurodivergence and to be able to perspective take from their point of view as it is the other way around. Perhaps more so because autistic people, as a core feature of autism that leads to the diagnosis, struggle with that perspective taking. Neurotypical people can readily think that way. Use that skill. Your check engine light is on. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. But the light indicates... Don't bother. I've wasted many an hour tilting at that particular windmill. <laughs> uh, what is that scent you're wearing? It smells great. Dandruff shampoo. I have dry scalp. 
They're so alike. Maybe that's why they click. They can better understand each other's point of view, the way that they think, or they can just share each other's skills at interpreting situations in a logical way. Autism is massively underdiagnosed in women, by the way. Well, your hair looks very nice. Are you a homosexual? <laughs> no, no, I've just given you a compliment. Hmm. Would have been more flattered if you were a homosexual. <laughs> The number of times in the comments people go, how can you make those gay jokes? Or someone cottons on and goes, oh, I've been watching your videos for ages, I've only just realised you're gay. Then there'll be a bunch of you watching this going, oh honey, we knew straight away. Guys, how about some music? Oh, I wouldn't care for that. Amy? No, thank you. Okay. Uncomfortable silence it is. Uncomfortable for you, but it might be very comfortable for them. Hey, Sheldon, have you told Amy what it was like for you growing up in Texas? No. A valid answer? Many autistic people think in a very literal black and white way. It's more difficult to make inferences or read between the lines, because that skill requires quite a lot of abstract thinking. That's another area that the neurotypicals and autistic people can slightly clash in their way of thinking, but two autistic people in the car together might click and gel straight away and be very comfortable in that silence. Two against one, Penny, two against one. You slipped, slipped and, and fell. fell into a robot hand. How <laughs> did I didn't know this was coming? Yes. <laughs> Penis first. <laughs> Makes sense. Yes. Now help me. That's a just a lubricant, but I have a feeling you fell on some of that as well. <laughs> That's his story and he's sticking to it. I have no idea how they're going to get this off. Is it going to be some emergency release button on it, but right next to the squeeze extra hard button? By the way, if you come to A&E with a robot hand around your knob, then <laughs> the doctors, the nurses are going to go... All of us were at the pub during that lecture at med school. When, when Winnie the Pooh got his head stuck in the honey tree, his friends all grabbed onto him and pulled and pulled. You do what you want, I'm not touching another man's honey tree. I adore Winnie the Pooh. I'm gonna struggle to think of him in the same way now. But there's actually a lot of mental health lessons that we can take away from the stories. Pooh really enjoys his life despite his forgetfulness. He embraces his imperfections. It's a brilliant example of, you know, compassion and self-acceptance. Eeyore's depression reminds us to check in on friends. That contrasts with Tigger's hyperactivity. Piglet's anxiety, but also his courage and strength in the face of that. But ultimately, it's all about the power of friendship and human connection, which is also a big part of this story. There's a gang that are very tight-knit that care deeply about each other, even if they think differently and don't always get each other all the time. That's where the emotions are not always logical. This episode is all about Sheldon's way of forming relationships and friendships, even if he does that in a way that's different to other people and they just don't quite get. What's... <laughs> Your characterization of approximately 171 different men is a few. What? Be nice. Where did you get 171 men? Simple extrapolation. In the three years that I've known you, you were single for two. And during that time, I saw 17 different suitors. If we work backwards... Well, jokes are when someone leads you down one path or creates one set of expectations and then gives you a surprise. I love that what Sheldon therefore finds funny is when what someone says doesn't match the data. It's actually not about how many men she's shagged. There's something very pure and very sweet about that. Interesting. Cultural perceptions are subjective. Penny, to your mind, are you a slut? <laughs> no! No! No. It's not even about the slut part. It's the to your mind. It's what she thinks that's more interesting to her than the actual facts. <laughs> Don't tug! No tugging! Next time, take your own advice. <laughs> Excuse me, could you help us out? My, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> I slipped and fell. Yeah, we get that a lot. What are they going to do in the emergency department? You're taught how to get rings off of fingers that are stuck, how to get some household items out of various orifices. I must have been at the pub during this class, but maybe this is what the future holds. Maybe in 2050, part of med school is doctors learning how to deal with robot sex games gone wrong. I need an orderly with a wheelchair. I got a robot hand grasping a man's penis out here. <laughs> you think you can be a little more discreet? I'm sorry, we don't have a code for robot hand grasping a man's penis. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be documented as in the NHS? I mean, we still use pages or bleeps, beepers. 
as you might call them in the States. Seriously, we're so behind the times. We've only just got rid of like fax machines a few years ago. I think it would just probably be written down and documented as foreign objects. <laughs> Why is it hooked up to a computer? Uh, it's what controls the arm. Well, it's frozen. Did you try turning it off and back squeeze? on again? <laughs> no, you see, it's more complicated than that. No, wait! <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is out of the honey tree. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody else wince and cross their legs when she did that? That could have gone so wrong. But also the charge nurse in an emergency department, they're pretty much always bang on. My mother's always wanted a grandchild. Really, your deeply religious, born-again Christian mother wants a test-tube grandbaby born out of wedlock? That's a good point. <laughs> Curses. If I had thought of that in the first place, I could have saved myself this whole night. Well, it's not that late. You could still go out and look for number 32. He's still scared of his mum. She was very strict and it must have also been quite unsettling for someone who thinks so logically to be given boundaries with such religious themes or religious and spiritual basis, which made watching Sheldon's dynamic with Leonard's mum, who's a psychiatrist, even more interesting. So if you enjoyed this, why not go and check that out? And I will see you for another video very, very soon. Love you, bye.